What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Joaquin Alexander, and today is the gold standard number three. In studio today, I have... Um, oh, first things first. Uh, today's uh, podcast is brought to you by ARX, uh, Air Duck and Air Solutions, professional Air Duck and Air <laughs> Solutions. Got to remember that. By uh, Mr. Marcus Rose. So for any air duct and uh, air solution needs you have in East Texas, call your boy Marcus. Today he brought me a guest, or he brought himself a guest. Um, let, I'll let you, uh, Marcus, introduce her. So we got the plug in the building. Uh, this is Tori. Everybody probably know her from doing hair, throwing shows, hair competitions. Uh, yeah. We we got her in the building. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. How you, uh, introduce yourself, Miss Tori. So, yeah, who who are you? <laughs> okay, well, I'm Tori Holloway. I have been a stylist for 25 years, and I'm currently wow. uh, staying in Mesquite, Texas. But I'm originally from Kilgore, Texas. Okay, home of the Bulldogs. Yes, the real Bulldogs. The real Bulldogs. Yeah, right here. Right here. Right here. No, 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 the red and red and red and black, red and white. The real Bulldogs. Y'all red and white, I think. Red and white. Yeah, right, we got gold, gold, gold and blue. Kill go for sure. Okay. We always, me and Chapel Hill, we always talking about the real Bulldogs. Bulldogs, yeah, yeah. Carthage Bulldogs too. It's all. But hey, but um. <laughs> So, um, you've been doing hair for 25 years. What initially, what was one day you woke up and you were like, you know what, I want to do hair? What was what was the thinking behind it? It's just so crazy. It's like um, I had went to, like, vacation Bible school when I was probably about 10 or 11, and they was having us all to sit down and say what we wanted to be, and everybody was talking about doctors and lawyers and all that, and I said, I want to be a hairstylist. And it just kind of... Spoke it into existence. At what that's age? Exactly, about 10 or 11. So I've been doing hair. Really, I started doing hair about that time. Did you Did you have like an auntie or mom or granny that you just kind of pushed in that direction? You were just kind of watching? I had a okay. cousin that uh, she did my hair. And uh, she was just really stylish and flashy and had the uh, nice Her name was uh, Sharon Massenburg. And so she still does hair. Probably been doing hair for like 30-some years. Wow. Wow. Okay, um, now from that, so so you went to uh, beauty school. I went to beauty school, cosmetology school, or whatever. I went right out of, in in high school. I took the course in high school, and so okay. when I graduated from high school, I just went to Austin to take my test, and I've been doing hair since '96. Wow. So it's about Damn. to be 25 years. So the, 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 the quite 25 years. The, the, the oh, no, year. Hey, so 24 so, years and a half. So oh, this is crazy, right? So I'm just thinking about hair in in '96. My mom used to come home with like the finger wave, with the spritz, with the with the uh, what was that thing? The, the French, French roll. roll. Yeah, I, the French yeah. roll. See, I was very, I was really known for the French roll. Yeah, and, uh, if you could do, if you out, could work oh, yeah. that spritz, you was, you was the. It's goat. so crazy because they named me the Pump It Up Queen. <laughs> <laughs> the spritz. Yeah, spritz what? to pump it up. The yeah, yeah. I just remember like my mom would come home. I'd be like at the time, like I had to be like six. And I used to poke her hair. It used to be so crunching. Hard. My dad, my dad used to be like, like woman. I don't know why you are. So like she used to sit and lay like on the side of her head. Like, yeah, like, like sculpted, sculpted hair yeah. back then was everything. Dang, like yeah. it took like to me back then. It took major skills to do hair. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it did. It really you had did. to have major skills to know how to make the hair lay and stay. Stay, man. You know what I'm saying? So now we're in uh, the industry where hair is just a lot flowy, softer, and so, just changed a lot. J- just kind of piggyback on what you just said. Like, do you think that that damaged a lot of women of color hair? You know, those type of styles and stuff like that? The well, perms and the spritz the and relaxes. the chemicals. The well, I don't think it actually damaged the hair. I think over the years of doing the same thing over and over again can just be damaging Damage. to your hair. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? So back then, that was like really protective styles. You know what I'm saying? Your hair would last a lot longer. Really? A lot longer. Hair would last a lot longer. People's hair actually was stronger then to me. But then when we got into the glue and, you know. Okay, okay. So okay. when the it's like really when the weave era came in. First we glued wow. it, now we sew it. So it kind of. So. 
do you you don't think that like a sewing is more protective a hairstyle than before? Because you, you don't put I think no actually chemicals. Then we mainly deal with the hair uh-huh. now, so you know you're not putting anything in it. But a lot of people getting sew-ins and stuff, and they just not doing anything to the hair. the hair. Like you know, it's uh, like they're not nourishing it. Process. We have so ma- I have point. so many clients that have a beautiful head of hair where nobody ever know it because they just wear hair extensions. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's the point of having all this nice hair? Nobody ever see it. I'm glad you said hair extensions. Uh, cause right now with the whole premise of racism and prejudice, I just want, when people hear this, uh, Latin black community, especially white women were, and pay a lot of money for hair extensions, oh, a, yeah. a, a lot of money, yeah. but you but they don't broadcast, it, broadcast it. Like they doing, you know, I, I got this, ain't, this is real by the way. But, so you know. basically because <laughs> it's like naturally, yeah. they usually have long hair. Exactly. So it's not. People don't notice, right? But I see it all the time. Like they, you can spot it a mile away because yeah, I'm used to it. Right, 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 right. They, they are so you don't. It's not like you don't go from short kinky to long silky. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, so that's right. what makes it so noticeable in the you know ethnic you know culture. It, it, I got. I got. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got kind of like since we kind of on the topic of dealing with ethnicity and dealing with hair and hair care. Um. What do you think the stigmatism is behind, you know, the straight hair versus natural hair versus the extension is in our culture? Well, the thing is, for so long, the kinky hair, the natural hair wasn't accepted in corporate America. You know what I'm saying? Because they wanted you to have a certain look to look like that you were more educated, okay. you know what I'm saying? Whitewashed, that's more all it is. Socially acceptable. So, yeah. Whitewashed. So now, you know, it's tr- we're trying to break down, you know, the the barriers of just so, wearing silk hair. Like, you usually couldn't work in a court system mm. or any of that if you had. Exactly. I, still, I still have clients that I, I, I be trying to push them to be natural, okay. and they would basically say, there's no way that I could go to work. With that. Wow. With curly hair. Yeah, because they... they... So, so mm-hmm. how do you think... And, and this is, you know, I, I think we try and try not to touch on certain topics, but given certain platforms, I think we have to. How do you think that over the years, mentally, that that's, and I, and I would have to say spiritually, because we're spirit beings, that has affected women of color? Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a tough one. Well, I think... We're learning to be more accepting of ourselves. Like, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're, you know, we're learning that, you know, we're more than just, you know, natural. You know, exactly. that we're spiritual and we're starting to express how we feel. You know Man, what I'm saying? Man, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's really deep and it's kind of what reason why I asked you that question. Because when you kind of put your hand on the pulse of culture, especially African-American culture and people of co- color in, in America right now, we talk about mental health, right? And mm-hmm. I don't think that we realize where time has taken us with yeah. mental health. How can you, for 20, 30, the last 50, 100 years, tell somebody that them in their natural state is socially unacceptable? And they have to live, you know, not in innately in who they are, mm-hmm. but what's socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. So to look in the mirror and look at yourself and not accept yourself because nobody else accepts you. Yeah. It's still bound. It's, in, it's still being bound and really enslaved. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like, you take from one level of slavery to another one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just like working on a job for somebody else is just taking you to another form of slavery. Yeah. They tell you when to come to work. Mm-hmm. They tell you how long you can work. Yeah. They tell you exactly how much you can get paid. You know what I'm saying? It's like people are steady setting boundaries for you. Yeah. So, so and, and it would be safe to say this is not freedom. No. It's you know, not. Um, and I, we sweat, we say, that, you know, and I was in the military and we say all the time, you know, freedom isn't free. Um, 
And sometimes what we do as people is our insecurities cause us to enslave other people, not by shackles or chains all the time, but mentally enslave other people yeah. because I don't feel secure around this I'm person. making us always compare yeah. ourselves to others. You're not smart enough. You're not tall, tall enough. enough. You're not yeah. light-skinned enough. Yeah. Your hair because, ain't long enough. Because you being around me doesn't make me feel comfortable. Yeah. So I have to tell you to cut your light off mm -hmm. or dim your light mm -hmm. so that I feel comfortable being around you. And I think that when we start talking about mental health issues in America, that's, that's damaging. Like, you know, and I'm going to talk about a touchy subject. You know, my daughter isn't the same skin tone as I am. And I was 29 when I had, when, when we had her. And uh, I said something to her mom. I was like, I hope that she's not my skin color. Yeah. You know, and it hurts me, like, right now, even talking about it. And But, you know, I had to live my truth that I didn't want her to be my skin color. Yeah. And and especially not be a black woman. Now, if she had been a boy, It'd have been different. It, it would have been a little different. But I think everybody wants their child to grow up with the best advantage to be successful mm -hmm. as possible. And I felt that, like, hey, you know, I don't want my child to have that uphill battle. You know, I want her to have almost the easiest point to success from A to B as I can possibly give her. And I was just like, hey, man, I hope that she's of a lighter persuasion. Yeah. So, and it's funny, you know, I'm, I'm in the mall all the time and it's like, oh, she's so cute. Oh, she's so, so, so beautiful. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, would she be if she was dark skinned? Yeah. And that's the same thing. I put a post on Facebook a couple of days ago. It says, what makes me better than you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And who, I mean, like, who says who's better? Who says that light-skinned is better? But that I'm was saying? that was socially engineered a long time ago. Yeah. You had the house Negro, and, and they pit the darker and the mulattoes against each other. Yeah. And over a couple of centuries, that that dissolution. Now, if you go to... Um, if you go to Brazil, mm -hmm. they're exterminating dark-skinned people in the favelas. Right. They had a the Miss Brazil uh, a couple of years ago was really dark-skinned, was was darker than Marcus, mm -hmm. and they stripped their title. But it was because they didn't want that they, they had the most of the world is still colonialized, yeah. and 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 not not Brazil is not a third world country, but um, that's all like hearing that with because I my my mother my two kids mm -hmm. she's a uh, little bit darker than Mark not picking on your yeah, color no, no. but when my kids came out they're little they're dark and light at the same time it's kind of weird but I, with me um, the person I'm, I'm I'm gonna end up marrying is not a black woman I you can't help who you love but I always had an affinity for chocolate skin dark skin women yeah. um, that's do I, I, I lost my virginity to a Nigerian girl. Uh, black women were always the one that gave me love. Mm -hmm. And why my own kind, Mexican women, you know, whatever. But that that even is in my own co in, in Mexican culture. Oh, yeah. it, it's yeah. the whole light skin, dark skin. It's all over the world, you know it's what I mean? It's so crazy because when, um, when I had my child, she came out light-skinned. with her, her car actually said, ivory skin, blue eyes. So when I brought her home and people seen my <laughs> child, they were like, that's not your child. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, I got yeah. that all the time. Like, there's no way that that can Did you get that child. from black folks? And see, that, 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 that's, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I was talking about uh, the other day or yesterday uh, on, on my last episode. Um, I haven't edited it or whatever, but, um, like, I'm giving it to people raw. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to be uh, in, with this platform Trying to transparent and it's, it's, usually, it's just it's the funny thing about it is it's usually the people like your own race that is more oh, prejudiced man. to you yeah. than you yeah. know what I'm saying. No, nah, like, we we talk a, man. a lot of people like a lot of um like when she was smaller, it's so crazy because she really didn't know what color she was until she really got in school because she would go to daycare. Wow. Basically, she thought she was white because she was the same color as all the kids at that school. Wow. But when she what what made the difference was when she got like in 
kindergarten or the first grade. Her color came in? No. No, the color didn't come in. Okay. She still was light. Okay, and she okay. still had blue eyes. But her hair texture was different. Wow. So they said, why does Shala have different hair than us? The kids. The kids. Told the, ask the teacher that. Why does Shala have different hair? She came home from school and was just crying. I mean, because wow. she was like, Mama, they said I don't have the same type of hair as them, so they don't want to be friends with me. But you kind of see how anybody that listens to this, especially um, Afro-Latino or, or just black folks in general, like, we do it to ourselves. Yeah. White people don't do it to us. No. No. Asians don't do it to us. Middle Easterners don't do it to us. You know, we do it to ourselves. It's one of those things that I think we sit back and anybody who's listening, I think we're just being real. We're not trying to be colorist or, you know, biased. I think no. we're just talking about real situations. Uh, and I think we stick in the past too long because somebody can come in your yard and plant a seed. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that you have to water the ground. Right. right. And and I think what we sit here and we complain about the seeds that have been planted in our community. We th- we we sit here and complain about the seeds that have been planted in our culture. But it's up to us whether we live in those stereotypes. That's right. Not up to those stereotypes. Like it's up to us to continue to water that seed. Like if somebody labels you a thug, that's not what you have to be. Like, you can change the narrative. Right. And what I see in our community, there's a lot of bad seeds from slavery up to now that was planted. Yeah. And and But what we continue to do is give life to those seeds. Right. Like, all you have to do is, like, water, un- like, plants unattended to will die. Yeah. And, and if somebody is coming around you planting bad seeds, like, don't give life to it. Nah. Let that seed die. Let that plant shrivel up and go on about your about your day, or pick the weeds and, and go on. But what we've done is it's like, and I went through it. It was like, okay, you want to label me as ugly? You want to label me as 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 bad? You want to label me? Okay, I'm gonna show you how bad I can be. Mm-hmm. That was my mentality. But what I should have done was, okay. If that's what you think about me, let me show you that I'm totally opposite. Yeah, let me let off. me show you how stupid you are for even labeling me that way. Um, and, and I think that's kind of where we are. And it's like, I think it also comes from we live in a time of instant gratification. Mm-hmm. Social like, media. Exactly. Yeah. It's like <clears throat> which road is easier? Taking the road less travel. Or following the trend. No one wants to be talked about. No one wants to be ridiculed. Mm-hmm. No one wants to be laughed at. So it's like, okay, how do I avoid all of these things? Do what's socially acceptable. Yeah. But doing what's socially acceptable is not what brings change. No. Nah. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that I see on social media now is we see few and we are seeing few and fewer people who look like us who I see more mixed race oh, yeah. of people and children being born every day. Within the next 20 years, it's not going to be a lot of black or white people. It's going to be a lot of mixed. We're going to be brown. You know what I mean? We're, we're going to be, uh, we're going to almost all look the same, almost have the same hair texture. And, you know, coming off of Martin Luther King, you know, we think that the only way to be is like, let's have a black thing, let's have a, a white thing, or we push the mix away like, oh, if you mix, you ain't black enough. Well, that's not in unity. Like, you can't complain about s- separatists and segregation of communities right. when you're to saying like, well, I want to be over here in my own lane. We, we ain't accepting y'all. Well, don't be mad when they don't accept you across the street. Right. Uh, so, and I think the hair industry and the beauty industry has so much to do with the way we maneuver through life. Yeah. I think, and this is my opinion, but women control the pulse of society. 
of, and I don't think women understand how powerful their reach is. Men do 90% of what they do for the opposite sex. Yeah. So, and I've always said that if women want dudes to stop being thugs and get an education, all women have to do is shift what their interests are. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if sagging needs to be social unacceptable, like, we do it because y'all accept it. Mm -hmm. We buy big cars with big rims <laughs> because y'all accept it mm -hmm. to be noticed. We uh, don't do it to be noticed by one another. We do it so when he pull up in a hoopty and I pull up in a Jag with 22s on it, who's the woman going to choose? Exactly. You know what I mean? I feel like y'all's purpose in some ways are so much greater. And we as men are kind of the beneficiaries. Y'all bring life. Y'all bring light. And we are here to share that light. Uh, women don't get enough credit, man. Women do not get enough credit. And, and the reason why they don't, I think giving women credit give men give women power that men the yeah. aren't ready to relinquish. Yeah. Well, uh, peop the oldest bones, as we know of right now, are of a woman yeah. in Ethiopia. As far as we know, four million years ago. That's I don't want to go into that rabbit hole. You know what I mean? But um, was a woman. So we came from everybody came from a black yeah. woman, Mother of Africa, all this yeah. other stuff. Um, so statistically speaking, socially speaking, um, especially in this country, we have, God, man, it's crazy. The, the stuff that you see on social media and you yeah. being, and, and I'm sure you've seen she your oh, yeah. social media hiatus. You have to, yeah. you, you have to, you have to have a you detox. Have to de you, have you have to, to de detox. I, I've had people tell me, I, but, um, just a little, you know, uh, basis of entrepreneurship. If you're on, if you're not on social media to sell something, get off of it. Yeah. That's just me. That I, I, that's a that's that's from a, a Gary V, Les Brown, yeah. Tony Robbins. They all say the same thing. If you're not on social but media, you find, you find yourself every single day, like going to to social media. Like as soon as you get up, yeah. you're on social media, and for what purpose? If it's not, you know, in my in my field, you know, you know, it's like they said if you if you don't if you don't continue to put yourself out there, you'll die. To me, you, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can post pictures all all day, right? And you you can stay relevant. You know what I'm saying? But who you are, your work ethic speaks you are, you know, for itself. So. Because yeah. I was a hairstylist before there was social media. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And I was a successful hairstylist before social media right so it's like you know you have to pick and choose your battles yeah. you know and i like every single day it was like you like we already compare ourselves all the time yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. and i found myself comparing myself to other stylists and why you know what i'm saying because unfortunately what god has for me is only for me exactly yeah. You know what I'm yeah so it doesn't matter like it's like even we i went to school to serve the same purpose yep. to do hair mm -hmm. okay so why should i be in competition with somebody for doing what i do you know what i'm saying like make your you own got, name you got your client i got my clients but we constantly always trying to compare ourselves to somebody else and i another stylist told me that she basically gave up doing hair because she just got so tired of the drama just no just feeling like she wasn't good enough yeah. because it's the, because of the comparison you know what I'm saying? That who says your cut ain't good enough? If your, <sighs> if your client likes your cut, mm -hmm. then it's good enough for exactly. your client. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, unfortunately, I have my own style. Mm -hmm. So it has to be good enough for you. And we have to learn to accept our style. There's enough money out there for everybody. And, and just being, to me, when you get to the point where you're satisfied with where you are and who you are, <laughs> See, real. Th and see, that's for me. That's why I don't think I'm. If I was a female, I couldn't be in the hair industry because I I'm a, a bully when it comes to commerce. If I can't find people, and, and this is nothing against other uh, hairstylists, yeah. But I tell I, I've had, especially here in Tyler or East Texas, that that's a whole other conversation. But in the Metroplex, I've I've told quite a few uh, ladies 
that I've met over the years. You want to grow, find two and three other ladies that are like-minded and have the same vision. Don't compare. Exactly. Don't compete. Yeah. Compare, you know, what I'm not good at. Maybe one's good at this. One's good at makeup. One, And then come together. Whatever your strength is. Right. Then you share that. Get the paperwork somebody. correct. You know what I'm get the Where, building. We, we get you know brand yourself. We, we, we're, we're supposed to be helpers one to Right, right. Sister, sisters, or just sisters so, keep or whatever. So I think what I've been looking at, at it here lately, especially, you know what I'm saying, trying to start my business and, you know, get more active, active in the community. Do you think the perception that mm-hmm. women support each other uh, more than men, do you think that that's an illusion or do you think that that's a fact? Um... I think it's an illusion. It's an illusion. The reason why I say that is because there are a lot of women that don't support, just like it's a lot of men. With women, it's more of, um, it's more of, we don't support because of our insecurities. With men, it's insecurity, but then at the same time, ego. it's power. You ego. Know what I'm it's yeah. power and e- ego. Yeah. Like the thing is, like a man never <laughs> wants to feel. Weak. In masculinity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just that's that's like the worst thing that you can do to a man is make them feel like inferior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. and so like 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 we're saying about cars, y'all come it's like my car is more expensive. expensive. My car yeah. is better. You know what I'm saying? Or my job pays more. It's like it's always a power thing. With women it's more of not really power. Vanity. You see Vanity. Exactly. Vanity. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we we're always, <laughs> unfortunately, That's it's crazy. like we're always trying to be chosen. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna tell you some. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you some crazy, like a story about we talk about vanity. Like, I think I talked on one of my interviews how like I always feel like I cash, right? A lot of people see me and man, how long have you known me? What seven years now? Eight years? Can you ask it over just a little bit to the left? To the, yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So Perfect. you know me that long. A lot of people have this perception that I'm, I'm cocky, I'm arrogant, I'm conceited. Uh, you can be though. Just, just have to. <laughs> I'm confident, but I'm not confident at the same time. Uh, I'm very insecure, but the way I show my insecurity is different than others. I'm I'm an introvert, so I feel like you always. I always say this about you. I feel like you always have your guard up that way no one can get in that get in the, so it seems like you know <laughs> so like, like if you tear those walls down those walls of insecurity down yeah. you know what i'm saying not always having to impress yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying you always have feel like you have to prove to somebody who you are instead of just being who you, who are. you are you know exactly. what i'm saying it's like we always give people our resume before they even or want to interview you yeah, know what i'm saying like yeah. i didn't ask you for your resume you know what i'm saying yeah. i want to get to know who you are but we so we so used to people judging us exactly that we come exactly. right off the top giving our resume saying this is who i am these are my accomplishments this is what i want you know instead of living in that moment, in that moment and enjoying yeah. each other's company like i don't right. know anything about you mm-hmm. but i'm enjoying your company you ain't told me nothing about how much money you make right I don't know where you live. I don't know what kind of car you drive. I'm into you for you. But if you give me everything that you have, well, I'm not going to be into you for you. I'm going <laughs> to exactly. be into you for your car, your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, you for yeah. thank you for giving me everything because that's the reason why I'm with you now. And right, you don't right, know right. why you don't find real love because you're giving out the wrong impression. You're trying to sell. You're trying you're selling to sell yourself. yourself. Women do the same thing, but men do it really Selling well. yourself. I agree. Selling yourself. Only when it comes to business, not personal relationships. And, and I'm, I'm, look, like I said, man, I'm glad that we're on the topic that we're on the, on the topics about because what I tell you when we start this podcast, it's like a journal for me. And I'm, I feel like I've been to the moment of like awakening or being woke or whatever. And now it's all about now transforming mm-hmm. into that person I want to be. And it's always like, you know, you know, where, where, like, where do I stand? Like, how do I really view myself? And it's something that I battle with daily because, like, I'm, I'm secure in who I am, but I'm insecure at the same time. And it's, and it sounds crazy, but it's like, you're right. I like put a guard up because 
I feel like that's my safe place. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I'm going to give you what you need to know about me. But if people heard the conversations that me and you have on the phone and I'm I'm pouring my, my heart out with all my problems and, and all of this, people be like, you know what he is? Like, so I come off or I present myself as one way. One way. But like if they, this get, person but if they got actually get to know you, they can know the softer side of you. Oh, man. I'm a, a, like, down. I'm a, like, I'll see, like, yesterday, like, I'm, I was just on YouTube watching uh, cultural conversations between Bloods and Crips and what they go through. And I'm at the house balling. If somebody seen but, me, like, you know, they the, wouldn't the know how thing passionate. Thing about it is, you becoming a father has yeah, really shown yeah. a softer, compassionate side of Marcus. Like, when I watch you on Facebook now, like, I see you lay down all of that, you know, the harder part. You know and, what? And, and it's because, man, kids, my, man, my child is my safe place. Yeah, our kids change our if, life. If you, if you notice, like, she's my safe haven. But she has allowed you to let some of those guards She down. has. Yeah, she I has. You know what? Because... I put her before me. Yeah. And she's something that I that I've created and I put in this world that I have to cultivate. And and she has given you that unconditional this love. love. Like she love you. She gonna love you regardless. Regardless. And see that's the And difference. I've never had that. Mm-hmm. You know, even even growing up in a home, it was always I always felt like if I'm not this, if, if I'm not, not doing, doing that, enough, yeah. then if I'm not the person that I need to be here, then you won't love me. Then you won't care mm-hmm. about me. If and even in dating, if you don't have this car, if you don't act like this, if you ain't wearing your clothes like that, then you're not accepted. But when it comes to my, when it comes to my child, like my breath can stink, daddy okay. broke, I ain't got no money, and she loved me. No matter what. No matter what, and it's uh-huh. like. I've never got that from a human but being. What, but we, what we have to realize is people, and this is where I'm at, people will say all the time, Toy, why are you so, it seems like you are, you so confident. It's not that I'm confident. It's that I'm reassured every day who I am through Christ. Yeah. Like, no matter how high you get, it's always higher levels. Mm-hmm. So if you just picture your life always going up and up and up, you're never, you're never good enough. Right. Never. You can never be never. good enough. So be good enough for you. Right. Yeah. Until you yeah. get to that next level. Like, hey, listen, I'm okay with just being a hairstyle. Some people think a hairstylist ain't nothing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm cool with that. But that's my choice. I'm happy with being who I am. Yeah. When I decide not to be a hairstylist anymore, I'm going to be happy with who I am. Right. And, and self love, when people, this is, people been saying this, this like, for the last couple of years, all you've been hearing is self love. But That's that real. is so important because once you realize the love that you have for yourself that God has given you, mm-hmm. then you can be satisfied with being dark skinned. You can be sa- yeah. satisfied with being a plus size woman. You can be satisfied with the amount of money you make, the car you drive, the kids you have, the husband that you have or you don't have. Yeah. You can be satisfied. And if you're not satisfied with yourself, you're never going to be satisfied Man, with anything or that, anybody that else. That word right there, satisfied. You got to be satisfied. Uh, they used to joke on me, like crack jokes in the Navy when I was in the Navy, because I was so insecure about myself. Like, I, I watch people now. Fitness is like this new thing, man. I've been power. I started powerlifting. I started powerlifting at uh, like seventh grade. And I always had this complex about being a smaller dude, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and I lived in a gym so much, so Tory, to where, like, I have a bad back now. Mm -hmm. I got a torn bicep. Uh, I have limited range of motion. I was killing myself. And at the end of the, and at the end of the day, no matter how strong you are, how big you are. I was still At the end of the day, it's gonna still person. it's still gonna be somebody that's bigger. <laughs> bigger. Yeah, it's exactly. still gonna be somebody that's better. Like, listen, all of us are different walks of life. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you was to look at our bank account, all of us got something different in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. We all came from, you know, uh, we may may have been poor, middle class, or rich. Yep. But at the same time, we all have the same soul and the same purpose, and mm-hmm. that's to be 
satisfied in who we are in Christ. Yeah. Unfortunately, you never really realize who you are until you are introduced to who Christ is. Oh, definitely, definitely. Like, I'm just being honest. Like, I really didn't realize my true purpose until I understand, understood who God was. Mm-hmm. I, I went to church. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I went to church my whole life. But did I really have a relationship with God? No. Right. That's you know big. what I'm saying? You and, know. and until I got that relationship, guess what? I was always second guessing myself, mm-hmm. always wondering, you know, am I good enough? And then when I was, when I really accepted Him and know who He was, then all of those insecurities and all the things that made me, you know what I'm saying, question myself, went away. Wow. And it's not that I don't have bad days, but I have comfort in Him. Mm-hmm. On those bad days, mm-hmm. so that's what makes a difference, you know. So I was, you know, like we were talking about my daughter, and a lot of people see her. Uh, I post her a lot on on social media. She probably consumed, you know, most of my social media. But what a lot of people don't see is, a lot of people see the change, like, oh man, Mark is different. But I don't think I ever showed how much I fought that change. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people. Think like, oh man, he's just a great dad. There was when my when my daughter was first born, like me and her mom weren't together, and I didn't see myself being no baby daddy. Yeah. I felt like that was beneath me. You know what I mean? That's not what I wanted. For <laughs> yeah, that's my not life. what you wanted. For life. That's not what I wanted for my life mm-hmm. being a baby daddy. And then going twenty nine years without having a child gave me a sense of pride. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? At the time, I felt like, man, my options are still open. And when me and her mom didn't work out, and then, you know, now I'm by myself, and now I got a child, now I'm that, that stigma that everybody's talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're, you're a baby daddy. And it wouldn't even, you know, and then, you know, it wouldn't even so much, you know, what my parents would, would think or what the church would think. I didn't even care about that. I fought it to the point to where I allowed myself to make excuses like, I think my daughter was three months old and I just kind of like walked away for like two or three months, like about two months of her life. Like, I it, didn't it's so crazy that around, we, you know? we tend to become the thing that we fear the most. most. Mm-hmm. Like me, right. myself, crazy. I never wanted to be a single, single mom. Right. I never. No wanted, one does. <laughs> I never wanted to have. Hey, what's up? I, I didn't, I didn't want to have multiple baby daddies and I didn't. I had both of my kids by the same man, but I end up being a single parent because he died. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like even even though I'm thinking, oh well, I ma- I was married to him. Right, right, right. I had two kids with him, but I still end up being a single parent because that's something that I fear the most. Right. And most of the time, things happen to us that we fear the most, and mm-hmm. I still end up being a single Dude. parent. You know what I'm saying? But God did not give us the spirit of fear. fear. You know what I'm saying? So, and I told my I told my little client yesterday, I said, she was like, ooh. I said, you know what? Fear is a thought. <laughs> so if you can change yeah, your mindset, mindset yo. and stop fearing things. You know, it took me two months. It, it took me <laughs> being away from my child for two months. Like, I'm, I dog her mother to save myself. Yeah. Like, and I'm being totally transparent stuff that i don't even tell people like my daughter was sick and i was sick too in the head because my daughter needed me and i let a few that i was creating in my own mind with her mom keep me away from my child yeah and i use her mom as an excuse of my own insecurity yeah. Because I didn't want to cope with being a a, a a baby daddy. I didn't want to cope with now you ain't the guy that you thought you were. You ain't you don't have the status that you thought you had. Like now you on child support. Like I was fighting it. I was fighting it hard. I was drinking every weekend. I was going out. I was hanging out. He didn't want to be another statistic. None of us do. Like no, and, right. and I do. woke up one day hung over at 30 years old, like, dude, what are you doing? Like, go get your child. And I sat her mom down 
And I'm like, look, whatever me and you got going on is what me and you got going on. But I'm not walking away and you not pushing me away from being in my child life. I don't care if we got to get through this kicking and screaming. Like, I don't want to hear it. And so why, you know? why did you come to that conclusion? Because I found out this was bigger than me. And it was your what? Spiritual walk? You yeah, had to get spiritual yeah, like in order to I went your to, life. I went, I was in a dark place. Yeah, and then I was just like, okay, God, like my parents can't help me, like you can't, like you got to speak to me. And I told you the other day, like I had to go on that mountain. I had to start reading. I had to start seeking things that I was afraid of and because I've been in church so long. Mm -hmm. The old time religion didn't work for me. Yeah. Like my dad has a doctorate. It's not a lot about the Bible or religion that I don't know. Right. It wasn't enough. I had to transcend to another level because I could quote all the Bible scriptures, right. but nothing was hitting home. And that's why I tell people the where I'm at in spirituality is for me. It might where where you at in spirituality mm -hmm. works for you. I've been in a religious home for 30 years. We got to realize that the we're, old -time we're, more, religion we're, we're more than denomination. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, of course, of course, we, course. We, we get so gun ho on, oh, I'm Church of Christ, or I'm Catholic, or I'm Methodist, I'm Presbyterian. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. We, 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 we are all, you know what uh, I'm I'm a child of God. Right, right, right. So the Churches not, are in competition yeah, with each other we, to we, God, to because get parishioners. You want to take out this work. I don't think mm -hmm. it takes this. Mm -hmm. So I want you to join my group because this is how we act. Right. You know Clicks almost. Again, it's all about putting yourself in a box. Right. And exactly. labels. You know what Man. I'm saying? Like I yep. said, take the labels off. Mm -hmm. You know, how long are we going to allow people to label us? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Label you to be you're not good enough. Exactly. You're, not, you're not religious enough. Okay, you can know the Bible backwards and forwards. Oh, but if yep. you're not going to live what's in it, if you're not going to hear to the word, if you're not going to accept God into your life and let him direct you, yep. then it's what all What did I tell you the other day, yesterday when we talked? I said, I said, carve your own lane, fool. I said, because you'll find yourself coming out of a box Get and putting yourself box. right into another box. So I had been in a box of religion my whole life. The one thing that I didn't feel was free. Yes. Like, I was put in a box of the way I was raised. I was put in the box of where I grew up. I was put in the box of this belief system, but I was looking for something that was gonna set me free. And I needed God not to come down. I needed to release the God that I was like just pushing down and, and holding down inside of me. And when that person came forward, that's when you seen the guy who spends more time with his daughter mm -hmm. than he does anything else. That's the guy that you see opening up and being more friendly and going and networking and stepping out on faith and starting his own business because I knew there was something in me that God put in me from birth. But that one word that you said, fear. I, fear. I feared not being good enough, not being socially accepted. But when I got to a point where I was like, I don't care. Like, I have to live my life for me. Well, the crazy you thing know? about it is people will look at you and say, well, Marcus came from the foundation of good church. Right. But see, with me was the difference. See, people thought of me as, I'm nothing. Then, you know, yeah. people will look at me and say, oh, she flashy, oh, she in the club. Like, she could not have Christ inside of her because every time I you see You can't judge she, somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's what I'm saying, you judging... You judging me on my outer, you don't even know me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just because I don't look like what a church woman, you think a church woman. I don't even know what a church woman you know looks saying? like. You know what so I mean? I, you're saying that, <laughs> you know, a church woman should look holy. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Nah, what man. does holy look like? Exactly. You know what why, did, why did God have, or why did, I mean, the, with you know Jesus and his disciples, all of them had issues. Listen, if your heart is not right, mm -hmm. I can take off all of this. Mm -hmm. and I can put on another garment, mm -hmm. I'm still going to be who I am. Right, right, right. So it doesn't matter how you dress it up. Right, right, right. 
what's really in you is going to come out. Right, right. So if you have Christ inside of you, I don't care if you're in the club. I don't care if you're at church. I don't care if you in Africa or Europe. Right, right, right. Christ is inside of you. Exactly. Oh. Um, but I know I know we got to get ready to wrap this up, man. This has been a good uh, Yeah, I'm glad you I'm, I'm glad you brought this tour. This kind of went different than you thought. And that's why I didn't make any notes. You know, I just kind of wanted, uh, I, I told him, like, when when I was telling him about you, I was like, me and you are like like soul brothers and sisters. Yeah. And it's like, no matter where we've gone in life and what we've done, it's like we've always had that, that, connection. that connection. And, um, like, you being here today allowed me to release some things into the universe and get some stuff off my chest that yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable even talking, you know, to Carlos. Because me and you have that 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 relationship where I'm free to talk to you because I know there's no judgment there. I know there's no ulterior motive, no ulterior motive there. And I think that our listeners needed to to hear this and, and I hope you know, a lot of them have been touched or helped by this because, man, people think mental health is just like, oh, you crazy. Man. You know, mental health <laughs> is, and, and I use myself as an example, I don't point fingers at people um, because behind everybody there's a story. Yep. A, a person who can create a life and then choose to stay out of that person's life that needs him for two or three months has a mental health issue. That's right. Right. I had a mental health issue. And, but I, what I realized that self medicating wasn't working. It's not going to get it. And prescriptions is not going to get it. I had to go to the source. And when I said I had to go to the source, who knows you better than the person that created you? That's right. And the crazy thing about it is accepting that you have an issue Man. is the only way that you can fix the issue. Yeah. If you don't accept that there is something that is wrong with me, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and yeah. seeking that help, you yeah. know, everybody needs that mentor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You need to have someone that you can talk to. You got to get physical. a right. I understand you can pray to God. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? But God sends you people. God sends you, people. you can't be around yes men. That's you you got to that you enable you in hold your behavior. You accountable. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I hold you accountable because I'm your friend. Exactly. You know, I'm going to tell you, you know, the truth because I'm your friend. You know, and it's not being it's not being judgmental. It's like when you really want help, you will seek it. You will seek it. You know what I'm saying? Because I could have went to somebody like I think we have friends for different things. Mm -hmm. Like I got friends that I go to invent when I'm out of character. Then I have the friends that I know that's gonna be like, Marcus, you wrong. Yeah. You're yeah, like, we, you know we, what I mean? We all had them friends. We we all got those friends who gonna tell us what we wanna hear. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, that ain't working for But you me. also gotta keep in mind that sometimes, I mean, it's good that you can vent to somebody that you couldn't vent to me or nobody yeah. else, your therapist in a sense. Yeah. But you have to be careful the tongue that you speak to certain people Man, because some know, people we'll as soon as you down. you hit a million dollar revenue in, in, in your business here they go, the, here they go. Yeah. that things that you vented to are them and, and what we're doing right yeah. now is yeah. the biggest thing that you can do that you don't see in our culture transparency no like we are not robots <laughs> and the best way to get help Seek help, find help. Even the help that you need within yourself is you got to purge. Whether it be a journal, whether it be a Facebook Live, whether it be a podcast, find, like, I, I got, and that's a podcast for a different day, but accountability. Yeah. Stop going to get prescriptions for help. And another thing is, why that we why do we feel like everything that we do deserves a pat on the back? It don't. I shouldn't have to pat you on the back for no. taking care of your child. No. Yeah. Oh you man. What man? When, when you have some of these people, <laughs> some of these, uh, uh, I, I'm not gonna say females. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I pay an astronomical amount of child support for one kid, mm -hmm. and I hear other dudes, man, I got to pay 300 million. And I'm like, man, you, you know, like, like, people, yeah, like you, how, dude, your I'm actions. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's life. It's you life. get what I'm saying? Right, right. But the thing about it is we want everybody to glorify us. Right. The only person that deserves to be glorified is God. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, unfortunately, just because you go to work or you even can be successful at what you do, why do you feel like you have to get praise for everything that you do? You know what I'm saying? I'm provider, man. I see so many people lost. Are you looking for now? What you, that's what you're supposed to do. No, they lost. They lost. They lost, man. They lost, man. You got to be lost. When you feel like that you have to put yourself on a pedestal, you know what I'm saying? You have to raise yourself above the rest. That is already a, there's a problem because you feel like you need to be glorified. And if God said, if I'm the only person that's supposed to be glorified okay. and you're wondering why you're not making it in life because you're constantly trying to put yourself Self on the pedestal. On the, mm -hmm. Listen, when God, when God gives you a platform, you don't have to put yourself Self there. He the gives pedestal. it to you. See, his gifts are, are free. They're <laughs> given. You know what I'm saying? You didn't yeah. do anything to deserve it. Right. You're not worthy of it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. He gives it to you because of his favor, his yeah. grace, and his mercy. Yeah. But people, we want to be like, well, I, I got all of this because yeah. of I'm I'm so talented, I'm so smart, I'm the I'm the best hairstylist in the world. Now, how you, how am I gonna say that? I'm the best hairstylist in the world. Do you know how it's big relative. this world is? <laughs> no, I mean, now it would be it, it would be different if you had other people telling you that. Because yeah. and, and on the flip side... And they can even tell you that, but it's not true. It's not fake. Right, you know, right, they're right. They're only telling you that. Why? For gratification. Patience. Listen, my kids can tell me all day, you're the best mom in the world. I'm the best mom in the world to you. No, and not. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm yeah. saying? But I have so many flaws and right. so many mistakes. They won't really I understand my, until you know, they get my, older. Man. I do my you know. very best. Yeah. Right, right, right. But That's we, all you can do. But the thing is, it's not, it's not, the, it's not that the people are not that are praising you, it's you allowing them to praise, to praise you. You get what I'm saying? Right, There's right, nothing right, wrong right. with me saying, I think you are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you can say, thank you. Mm -hmm. But when you allow somebody to praise you and yeah. boast you and lift you up, then that's the sin. Exactly. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because no one should want to be glorified mm -hmm. but God. And that's you shouldn't what we think more highly of yourself than you are too. Listen, the and thing it's a is, balance. It's, 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 and that's, it's why a balance. The, that's why the Bible says, to remain humble. Mm -hmm. You can't be prideful and humble. They don't go together. They're the opposite. Yeah. You cannot be prideful and humble. They're, they're the total opposite. Mm -hmm. It's like being cold and hot. It's the yeah. total opposite. Yeah. Being prideful means that you feel like that you are basically have made it. And exactly. what we're just saying, no one has made it. Right, right, right. You're, uh, you're constantly. I, I get what you're higher. saying. You're yeah. constantly going higher and higher. The, the, That's the, why you remain the two humble. Connotations can't live exactly. in the same space. You, right, you right, right. You remain humble because you're only blessed to be where you are. Because at any time you it can, can be fall. gone. Right, 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 at right. Any time you can fall. So why would I boast on being up high when at any time? I can come down. And once I come down, then what? Then you feel like a what? A failure. Right. So you went from one level to another. But if you remain humble, you don't have to worry about coming back down. Like, you're you know what's funny? Where you are. It's funny that you say that. And, and I don't mean to cut y'all. No, 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 no. Like, no. It's funny that you say that. That I live my life in a, in a different light to say that I don't say that I have to do anything in life. And I, I make the statement, I don't have to be a good father. That's right. I don't have to be a good it's a son. Choice. <laughs> I get to. Mm -hmm. I right. get the opportunity to be to be a good father. I, I've been given the opportunity to be because, to be because I know that there are people out there. Do you think that your husband would have wanted the opportunity to be a good father? No. Yeah. There are people in prison right now who would want the opportunity to be free right? and doing a podcast. Man. So I'm blessed and honored. to get to. I'm blessed to be broke and starting a business. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, I'm blessed to sit among the people and meet the people. So people feel like that life owes you something. And it don't. Life doesn't. So every opportunity that is given to you Take it 
wholeheartedly as an opportunity that life has shined right. its goodness on you. Right, right, right. Because it could very much so shine and turn okay. its ugly head on you. Jesus. It's just you woke up on this side of the ground mm-hmm. today. And then on the other ground. T- one thing that I heard, man, Iki Johnson helped me through a lot of dark times. And the one thing that that he that he that he preaches is that we have to change our mindset when it comes to our lives. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that he said that you have to look at like I don't have to do anything, but I've been blessed and favored because easily the stone could be turned. That's right. Uh, that there are people who are starving, there are people who are homeless. You've been given an opportunity that many would die for. And uh, and, and yeah. everybody and everybody has everybody has opportunities, but they don't take them exactly. because I could have let my fear sink in this morning and not take this opportunity. Right, 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 right. You get what I'm saying? And so, and I wouldn't have been able to know who you are. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't have had this opportunity to touch. And to Man, for many yeah. people to hear exactly. what I have to say, exactly. you know what I'm saying. So we have to take the opportunities that are given to us, yeah. not make excuses, you know, or look down on yourself because you feel like you didn't have you had the opportunity, Tune. but a lot of times you didn't take them. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know right. And you know, I know we got to get. No, right no, you're good. We're good. But you know, in closing, I kind of lost my train of thought. But Inky said that you know, success is is rented. And every day, rent is due. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Powerful. you have to be the best version of yourself right. every day. And I and I wake up every day and I ask myself, Marcus, what version of yourself are you giving the world today? Mm-hmm. And that's what we have to ask all ourselves. Am I being the best? Because I can't be like anybody else. But I have to ask myself, am I giving the world the best version of me? And, you know, the only way that we can change the world that we live in is change the world that we live in. Right. Is is I tell everybody, I control not your universe, not the universe, but the universe that I create for myself. Yes, sir. Your own world. Yeah. I, I've made my own world. I get to control what's in it. I can get I get to control the mindset, I get to control the energies and the vibrations. And if you're not adding to my universe, if you're not bringing good energy in my universe, then hey, I don't have anything against you. Put that over there. <laughs> okay. You know because the worst thing that I see today to it and Carlos and you probably see it too is everybody wants to do and be what they want to do. And that's absolutely fine. But just know that those things have an equal or opposite reaction. Right, right, right. I get to be what I want to be, but I can't control how people react to it. All I can do is know that I'm living in my truth and I'm walking in my light. I don't want your light. Exactly. Your, my, you know, the one thing is, a hundred watt light bulb uses a lot more energy. <laughs> okay. Than forty. A twenty. A like, forty. Yeah, you, know what I'm you know. But it's like I want that person like, mm-hmm. like, and I say all the time like, do you want to work this hard? They don't do know. You the, they don't, go, they do you don't know, know the cost. They don't know the cost Yo, of your like, oil. <laughs> like this, it's expensive to run this one hundred dollar mm-hmm. this this hundred watt light bulb. Mm-hmm. You just focus on your forty. Like, right. you, like don't praise me. Right. 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 It's right. Not what you think it is because I live in a mindset to where like if I had to sleep under the bridge to get where I want to be in life that's what I'm willing to do that's, right. that's my choice but that's not the way that you have to operate to get to where you want to be but you got to realize this because of your sacrifice Carlos mm-hmm. but we're here right right right, right. Man. So but I want to be here and if, I, and if, I wanna, but yeah. the thing is but if you did not sacrifice that right yeah. we wouldn't be able to do it so you got to realize, you got to make sure that the walk that you're walking and the things mm-hmm. that you're doing is not just for your own pleasure, yeah. but so that you can help somebody. Else. Right. We're yeah. never blessed just so to you're be blessed. blessed. Of, of, you're blessed yeah. to be a blessed earth. Right, you know right, what I'm right, right. So, yeah. or a blessed eat. You know what I'm saying? 
So you got to remember everything that you do, make sure that it's, you're doing it for the purpose and not just for yourself, but for somebody else. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. We get so caught up in what I want for myself. myself. You yep. know what I'm saying? But what are you doing? God blesses you. And then what do you do? You stunt. Yep. You get a lot of things to 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 to, to, to brag about. Brag about or <laughs> for self gratification. Uh, but what have you given to somebody else? And, in the and we give of, and we give nothing, man. And it's it's sad, man. I you know, we've gotten so into an age where we're so entrenched in what we look on the outside, yeah. how we perceive mm-hmm. to other people. Like, I, I sit and I watch people go on vacation, and I almost feel down because, man, I haven't been anywhere significant since I got out the Navy in 2011. <laughs> you know, and I'm watching people take vacation after vacation after vacation. It's not for you, though. It, it, it's... it's, like it's... I, and but then I have to snap back to reality, and like I feel as though it's not my time yet. Yeah. Because I'm built different. And the crazy thing you know, about this, and see, I'm the person who takes vacation after vacation. Yeah. Do you know what that means? <laughs> when you come off of vacation, you need a vacation. vacation. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, so and, and I was realizing again. That was just self gratification for the min- the moment. I wanted to take a vacation from from the things that I was going through. through. But when I came back, I still had to you go still, through yeah. it. You know right, right. It's almost like getting high, like yeah. you smoking, yeah. and, and yeah. then you come down, and it's the same. So a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, and it, and I'm not, they're not. I'm not saying again. There's nothing wrong with taking vacation. No, no. But not what at I'm all. saying, make is, sure you got your p's and once q's. You have your life together. together. When you line your life up in the direction that you should be going in and for the purpose that you should be Man, going in. So everything good. will line up. You will <laughs> right. be able to have vacation. The universe will line up the, line you'll up. Be able the to chakras, your whatever your energy. You'll be able to be in good health. You'll be able to love your kids. You'll be able, you'll meet your mate. You right. know what I'm saying? He said, God said, seek me first. Mm-hmm. If you seek him first, you can't help but to line up. You wonder why your mm-hmm. life ain't, I'm going to be honest. My life was not lined up. Right. I was on a wheel going mm-hmm. round and round, <laughs> doing the same thing yeah. over and over and over again, trying to figure out, I've been doing hair for 20-some years. Oh, I've made a lot of money. I drive a nice car, lived in nice houses, got a husband, got kids, but I was still on that wheel, mm-hmm. never being satisfied. You weren't never, satisfied with yourself? Never. N- wasn't satisfied because you cannot be satisfied. No. Nope. Oh, right, right, right. You know okay, what I'm So once you realize that no matter what you do, no matter where you go, and no matter who in your life, until you line up and seek him first, yeah. mm-hmm. you have to. your life ain't going to be complete. Once you line up with the word of God and start seeking God, then you will start find out that you'll be satisfied with the, 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 yeah. the you'll be satisfied with so, your, your, your so regular car, yo, your, your, your regular that, spell. That, that, <laughs> that passage of scripture is, is, is in Matthew 6 and 32, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. And everything that you ask shall be added unto you. To you. And then the next, the very next verse says, Don't give thought about tomorrow, for today carries its own burden. Yeah. Right. So, but what 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 Paul was talking about in that body of work mm-hmm. was the people that he was talking to was so caught up in the materialistic things, That's right? right? And and they were actually sitting here. In, in the midst of almost going into a famine. Right. And Paul just said, he said, he said one thing. He said, does, he showed them. He said, uh, yeah. Her daughter needs to go. <laughs> oh, okay. No, they can, they, oh, she, 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 she okay, hold on. No, I, I'll go in a little. But, uh, excuse us, y'all. No, but, you know, while we're sitting here, uh, not to get off topic, but what he was, what the people were doing was doubting. Mm-hmm. Murmuring and complaining. They were murmuring and complaining about their, about their situation and their condition. And what was happening to these people is Paul just stopped and told them. He said, while you're sitting here complaining, he said, look around you. He said, do you see the bees? how they still buzz. Do you see the trees, how they still grow? He said, do you see the 
beasts of the field and the birds of the air, how they still go forth about their day. He said, is your father, and he, he said that for a reason. He said, is your creator, the one that created you in his own image and after his own likeness. So I broke it down like this. It says, how can you have so little faith when what you deem to be so minute, God takes care of you. How can you possibly believe you being his child that he does not have the same, if not more? Care for the you. problem that I see, and this is really on a spiritual level, and I, I look at nature and gauge my day every day and remind myself, is that we are the most disobedient, unfaithful, unfaithful creation that God has created. That everything from the weather, from the turning of the world, of the earth on its axis, to the wind, to the animals, everything listens to him and obey. And the crazy thing, and then he gave us dominion over dominion all Dominion over all that. <laughs> and, we're the most. And, and, and we're the most, un you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, everything listens. Guess what? Every season comes on time. Mm -hmm. Every, the you don't have to worry about when day comes or when night comes. It hearkens to his voice. And, 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 and the wind blows when he says it, it does. And you see Every spring, seed is planted, mm -hmm. flowers grow, mm -hmm. they die off, and they come back. And we look at our life and our trees being pruned of friends, of problems, of bad mindsets. And then we have the audacity to sit back and think that God has forsaken us. Yeah. No. How are we any different from the rest of his creation? The rest of his creation does the same thing that we do in our life. We separate ourselves from nature, but we're one with nature. But, and, see, but, but the real difference is with us and nature is that God gives us a will. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, listen, you have a choice yep. mm -hmm. to follow his will. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. And that's when I saw on Facebook, I said, I decided to give my will, <laughs> will to, to God, right. not my life. I didn't your give will. my life to God because my life already belongs to God. Yeah, right, right. You I gave your will. my will. Right. You know what I'm saying? I will trust you. Mm -hmm. I will follow you. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I will go. You know what I'm saying? So you have to give him your will. You know what I'm saying? And not if you're living in your will, then... You don't belong to him. No. You know no, what I'm saying? So no. if you doing, like, I heard people say, I do everything I want to do. I, yeah. And when I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Not you know instead of saying? we or and us. how I want to do it. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? You can't be like that because your and life ain't your not gonna, yeah. and, and God isn't going to fight you for mm -hmm. control. He going to let you do whatever you want to exactly. do and how you want to do it. How, how and then you, you wonder why it. you keep on being upside down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you always incomplete. You always unsatisfied because you're walking in your own will. You yep. need to learn to walk in God's will. You know what I'm saying? Yep. His will for your life. You know, if God is telling you to go left, he's not going to make you go left. He's telling you to go left. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So if you choose to go right, then you're no longer in his will. In his will. And then you wonder why 10 years later, you still on the wrong path. Because you chose to go yep. right when he told and, you to go and left. you know what's funny? We have this premise. How much time we got left? About five minutes. Okay. And, and I'm going to close with this on, on my part. We have this this thing that we think everything with God is sunshine and roses. Mm -hmm. It's not. But things don't grow that way. I seen today, I said, the other day I was sitting outside just on the balcony looking at God's creation. And what I noticed was I'm sitting here looking at my life and I'm just like, wow. Like, it seems like Things are going the way I want them to, but they're not. And I was just looking at the trees, and I know springtime is coming. And I was just like, wow, that tree has no leaves and no fruit, but it's yet alive. But I know that in a few months, gonna be full. it's going to be full of leaves, fruit, 
and whatever fruit it bears. Most of us don't want to go through the pruning. Yeah. We don't want to lose our leaves. We don't want to lose our fruit. We don't, Some trees have to be trimmed back right. to grow fuller. Well, we think that there's God forsaking us, mm-hmm. but there's God growing us. Right. And when I say that we're one with nature, if God has a prune a tree for it yeah, to grow, thing for us. why do you think that the the that need with us is different? And, and, that's, it's and, and that's the reason why God said we're not exempt. No. You know what I'm saying? We're you're not. not exempt from going through the pressures of life. But the difference is when you're in him, you have hope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing about it is, you know, you're going to go through things. And it's just like in a relationship. As soon as your spouse or your friend or your your boss do something that you don't like, you're ready to quit, <laughs> quit give up, yeah. and you're done. Yeah. You get what I'm yeah. saying? But how are you going to make it to the next level, level if you quit? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's in exactly. marriage. Like, okay, you've been married for two years. Yeah. You got a divorce because adversity came. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, adversity going to come because when you made these vows, you made to be together for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, and to death do you part. Right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And there's a many times I've been divorced. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's times Me when too. I wanted to walk away. You know what I'm saying? But you have to be able to withstand the, the hardest time. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, in order for a marriage to work or relationships to work or a job to work, both parties got to be willing you know what I'm saying? One person can't make it. You know what I'm saying? So right. if you had a marriage that failed, if you was willing, then you did your part and you were okay to to be free. Right, you right, 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 right. But if two people are both still willing, mm-hmm. which the two people got to still be in the will of God. Yeah. Right, right, right. See, that's why I say you unequally yoked. Yoke. Because you unequally yoked together because you're not on the same path. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if both people are on the same path, seeking the same God, mm-hmm. Wanting the same things out of life, now how can they not be one? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm yep. saying? So that's yep. what it means to be equal. People mean people think equally young men is just because oh I'm an unbeliever, he's not an unbeliever. Yeah. No, it's more than that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The weight that you carry, unfortunately, mm-hmm. I need to be able to carry that same weight Wait. because we yeah. equal. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When you go through, when we marry, when you go through, I go through. through. Yeah. When you sick, I'm sick. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So guess what? I got to get up. You know what I'm saying? I need to I need to be able to help you back mm-hmm. up. You need to be able to but, help me back up. And I know you up. can you know attest to this. Like, uh, man, we running out of time. But the one thing that I'm learning is we have to learn, even in dealing with one another, uh, and I heard Will Smith and, and Jada said, like, you have to know what you're responsible for. And I have to know what I'm and that's, responsible And you know what that, y'all? It's setting boundaries. Boundaries. You got to set yeah. boundaries from the beginning. Exactly. Yeah, if you don't, then... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to set those boundaries. Yeah. Because if those boundaries are not set, we're going to cross them. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if I don't even know you, I'm going to cross some boundaries that you don't like because I don't know you. Yeah, you know right, 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 right. But if you set these boundaries, you're going to say, Tori, don't touch my... Right, 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 right. Already told me we're not gonna use the headphones. Right. So I come in here and pick up the headphones. We're gonna have some issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. You already told me right, not right, to right. use them. Yeah. So that's what it means, like to set boundaries in your life. Okay. You know what I'm saying, and not crossing them. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I'm saying. So the, the, to sum it all up, in order for your life, my life, and Marcus' life to be on track, we must all get into the wheel. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? Giving our will to a higher power. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be on the hamster wheel. We all been on that. Yeah, yeah. In the wheel, you know what I'm saying, of the higher power, which is God. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And let him be the center of your life. And once he's the center of your life, then everything else. Is in alignment. Well, in yeah. line up with that. Yeah. You know okay. what I'm saying? Um, well, that, I couldn't have said it any better myself. <laughs> um, do you have, well, I know you said you were, you're taking a, uh, hiatus from social media, but if anybody wanted to contact you, well, and... I have got back on social. Oh, media. oh, okay. Well, so my social media is Tori Harris Holloway. Okay. And my Instagram is underscore True Diva underscore. True Diva underscore, and I can put that on the. Uh, I, yeah, you can just give me the actual names, and I can slap it on the. Yes. On so, the visual. You know, I want to thank everybody uh, who tuned in on live. We did some powerful stuff. I was just kind of watching. Uh, the people who are watching and, and, and tuning in, and some of, I was kind of looking at some of the comments that that they were leaving. Um, you know, Oral Nation um, and Carlos can you know tell you guys about that. Uh, we're trying to bring another platform 
I think too much was structured. And I, and we want to open this platform, and I'm pretty sure he can piggyback that. We want right. to open this platform. You know, message me, message him. He's going to put all his information out there. If you just want to get on this platform and we talk, if you got a, a history, a backstory, uh, a business, anything, man, you know, you want to get get it out there to the people and you want to sit down and have a genuine conversation, you know, hit one of us up, inbox us. Right. You know, I'm, my, you can find me, RRX, you can find me on the Marcus Road. Uh, I have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, man, I'm, I was I was glad to have you here. I know you was nervous, uh, but I knew this kind of therapy we needed. And there's a lot of people out there who need some real talk. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. not just church talk. I think we we go we so used to that setting, but we need other settings as well. Uh, and I was telling you that the other day that I think that our work can be done just as much and effective yeah. uh, outside of the pool. He's not. He's not. He's not within just those. Those four walls. just those he, four he, walls. He is the world. Exactly. You know what I'm <laughs> when these people see us, I just want them to know uh, that we're bringing good content, uh, whether it be to help you financially. Help you business wise, help you spiritually, right? Uh, help you with your children, uh, anything. A little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. And be well rounded, and that's exactly why I call it the gold standard because I want everybody to have a, such a high level of them, not necessarily themselves, but you get what I'm saying. Awesome. Um, and uh, closing thoughts again today's uh, gold standard number three. Um, I I'm I'm gonna be on iTunes here within. I should be getting an email any day now. Um, I haven't put it on SoundCloud or Spotify. Spotify, I have to get uh, I have to get permit or uh, not permission, but they have to like look at my stuff and yeah. yeah. Um, but again, what was your social media again? It is Tori Harris Holloway. Okay. On Facebook and underscore True Diva underscore. Okay, underscore. and y'all already know where I can y'all can find me. Um, thank you, Marcus, for bringing in such a lovely lady. I appreciate you coming on. This will go global. Yeah, yeah, this this because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you you have because you have hair is hair is a lot of things and beauty. Uh, it's it's one of those industries that touches a lot of different ones. But uh, anyways, uh, I always close this with God bless everyone. Thank you for Marcus for putting thank on live. Uh, but in again in closing, um, man, this was powerful. Man, Yesterday and today, good, I, I know it's a release therapy um, to get a lot of and hear from different walks of life, especially the one, uh, ladies, man, because we haven't I had this perspective more. Right, right, right. I think, I think the the balance that that we 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 lacking the yin and yang, you know, yeah, man. I think right, right. We constantly the feminine and the male. And, and female, woman to man perspective. Right, right, so, right, right. My way is just my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's built on my experience. Right, right, so, right. So, yeah, I think we need to do this more often. Ladies, hit us up. If you want to get on the podcast, if you want to get on here with us, hit us up. Inbox us. Uh, we'd love to have you. Anyways, uh, again, our right, boy, everybody knows me as Carlos on the, on, the, on the professional terms, but on social media, everybody knows me as Joaquin. But, um, Thank you, man. Thank you. And uh, and uh, this will be out sometime next week. And y'all check us out. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Auto Nation and on the visuals up there. So anyways, uh, God bless and love, peace, and grace. I'll holla.